Paul goes on to say, uh, when he's uh, saying in verse 18, notwithstanding, uh, every way, whether in pretense or in Christ, or truth, Christ is preached. And I rejoice in this, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And he speaks even more strongly in verse 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, uh, but that with boldness, as always so now, also Christ should be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. Now, this is quite an unusual statement. Because what he's referring to here is something even stronger than saying that God should be magnified in what he says. He says, Christ magnified in my body, whether in life or death. Now, as you understand, Paul was speaking to the Philippians, Philippi being in Greece, that he himself was in Rome in prison, in bondage, in chains, as he often says. And so what he's really saying is that Christ should be glorified not only in my message, not only in what I speak, but glorified also in the very circumstances in which I find myself. And I echo that very strongly because I remember when I was in the prison myself, as you know, 1972 to 1973, when I was praying, in the end, I was seeking that God would work a miracle through my release so that God would be glorified, again, not in what I was saying, but by my life, by the very evidence and because in answer to prayer, it was the prime minister that came to rescue me. That brought tremendous glory to God because it opened doors all over the world. Of people wanting to know why the prime minister had come to fetch me. And of course, it was a phenomenal testimony. But he goes on and in verse 21, he says, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And you know, the, the whole of Paul's life is centered around the call, the challenge, and the life that he lives. So that he lives because of Christ, Christ lives in him, his whole life is a testimony and a witness. Right from the moment of his conversion on the road to Damascus, when he was going to persecute Christians, and remember he was a participant at the stoning of the first martyr Stephen, and yet he desires that everything from that moment would bring glory to Christ. And he says, uh, if I live in the flesh, uh, this is the fruit of my labor. And in verse 23, he says something quite remarkable. He says, I'm in a torn between two things, he says, having a desire to depart. I mean, that's to die and to be with Christ, which is far better. And, you know, so many, even Christian believers, see death in the wrong sense. Death is not an end. Death is a beginning. That's the whole purpose of resurrection. That's the whole message of Christ. Death is, is not an end. It's just simply an entrance into the new life. And so he can say quite actively, uh, yes, to live is Christ. But even if I die, that is my gain. It's better off. Uh, so that's why he could echo it and say, it's, I'm torn between two. One is the need to stay and support you. And the other is to simply go to be with the Lord, which is better. 
because he confirms that in the next verse by saying, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. In other words, you need me alive. <laughs> I suppose it's difficult for me to say much on this, but I do know that one of the things which is so effective in my ministry at the moment is my age. <laughs> the fact that I've lived through so much I mean, I was born before the, uh, the, the, the last war. I, I lived through the war. I knew King George VI. Uh, remember his calls to the nation to prayer. I can remember Queen Elizabeth as a young girl actually learning to drive, driving for the military <laughs> in this country, yes. And, and the simple things she had to do uh, I never forget the fact that she had to learn something about car mechanics. Can you imagine a queen learning car mechanics, how to change a wheel? <laughs> and there's not so many of you listening to me know how to change the wheel on a car these days. Uh, you call for the emergency services. But, you know, it's the simplicity and all these memories and the time when, on two occasions, my home in London was badly damaged in the war, how my family was spared and my father was spared and so on. But the real witness is that here I am, aged 90, 72 years in full-time ministry, and stronger and more on fire now than I was then. <laughs> and. It, it is an example and a witness. And actually, as I talk to you now, I'm, I'm on my way in two days. I'm on my way into the Ukraine. And, you know, it, that's not easy at the moment with the war going on for me to have to travel in that way, to flying into Poland and then having to get taken over the border and then traveling, and I'm not quite sure how yet, into Kiev. But for even a young man to do it, but uh, for me to be able to boldly do it age 90 is quite some testimony. Uh, and I want my life, my strength, my health, just as Paul is saying, I want it to be a testimony to the glory of God. So uh, Paul goes on to say, he says, yes, I believe that my presence is needful for you and I, this is why for me, I know that my ministry is nowhere near finished. I know that my ministry is not diminishing. I know that my ministry is growing. In actual fact, those who are my intercessors are, are, are confidently saying, David, this is only a beginning. You're going to see things now in the coming years far greater than anything you've seen in the past. And I am confident that that will happen. So Paul goes on, but he then begins to move on speaking very much to the Philippians about their unity. That um, uh, he says in verse 27, I may hear of your affairs that you might stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. <laughs> 